Hello, Viking fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Viking Talk with Coach Josh Morgan. Brandon Davis, and of course, it's always great to have with us Warren Central Head Football Coach Josh Morgan. Coach, great to see you. You too, Brandon. Well, another disappointing week, Coach. Three weeks in a row we've, we've had a sit-back. Uh, last week we fell off the hands of Northwest Rankin 30-20. to 20. Give us your thoughts on that game. Uh, didn't play very well. Uh, didn't play very well on the defensive side of the football. Uh, I felt like... Uh, had a good week of practice, and, and uh, you know, they uh, made some plays in the passing game, uh, really big plays, and, uh, you know, really uh, frustrating to, 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 to allow that to happen to us. And um, third downs were, were very, uh, you know, bad for us uh, on the defensive side of the ball. So we couldn't get off the field, couldn't make plays. Uh, and not only that, you know, they hit some big plays that, uh, uh, through the air, and uh, I, I thought uh, I thought that, that uh, we really played uh, by allowing those. We really really dealt ourselves a bad hand, really being in a bad uh, position starting off the first half, and uh, uh, it was just uh, uh, did some good things. But again, those big plays over our head is something that we've worked on and really harped on, and uh, uh, it, you know they made some several good throws and, and just. Uh, had guys in the right spot, and, and uh, we didn't make the plays when we had chances to make the play, and um, so it was a frustrating night to say the least. Well, 27 to seven going into half, and another one of those weeks, coach, where the ball bounced here and there, a couple of plays, it just didn't fall in our laps a certain way. It's got to be frustrating for you. Yeah, I think uh, our team's very frustrated, uh, upset, frustrated, uh, just not used to this. Right, uh, playing really good folks. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, our district is tough, and, and 6A football is no joke, and it's not for the weak at heart, and, and uh, nobody cares if, if uh, uh, how we feel. They're coming at us, and we're going to get a really good football team week in and week out, and uh, it's our job to, to be at a high level and to play at a high level and to compete at a high level, and uh, you know that's that's uh, that's where our minds got to get geared to, and uh, uh, it's just uh, it's frustrating to watch. Um, uh, our, our guys come up short because you, you know, and, and uh, that's just the way it is when you're uh, going through something like we're going through, and it's tough times, uh, tough times, and, and adversity, and uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, if you've never been through it, it's tough. It's tough because there's a lot of time put in it, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, hopes from the, our, our guys and uh, wanting to do good, and, and when it doesn't work out for you, it's very, very frustrating, very tough. And uh, it's uh, these guys are learning a lot of life lessons right now. Well, as, if we sit and think about it, you and this coaching staff have been together for pretty much your entire tenure here, and you've created a winning tradition here. So you being 0-3 in region play, you hadn't been 0-3 in region play for the, the past nine years or so. Yeah. It's got to be tough on you as a coaching staff because – the kids are frustrated, but you as a coaching staff, you're in uncharted territory as well. Yeah, and, and a lot of that goes back to, you know, uh, the culture that we've been able to build here and what people are used to. Mm -hmm. And uh, But you have to work. Uh, you, can't, you can't take anything for granted. And uh, uh, you have to work at, at keeping that and maintaining it. And it's a, it's a week in, week out battle, a year in, year out battle. And uh, we've hit some tough times. And, uh, uh, this this last couple weeks and uh, it's frustrating as a coach. It's frustrating as players and fans, and as parents and, and uh, you know nobody signs up for this. Everybody wants to win all the time and and uh, but I can promise you this that we're all uh, dialed in and locked in and trying our very best to to help these guys finish the year on a positive note, get things fixed and uh, uh, our guys came back to work on Monday and a Tuesday with no school. Uh, all of them here and accounted for and, and anxious to get better and get get to work and uh, uh, so our culture is not the problem uh, you know we just have to uh, we have to be better at making plays uh, we have to be better and uh, in some areas and we have to have more urgency we have to have more fight we have to have more uh, desire and, and outwork folks and and uh, but but opportunities are going to be there and and uh, there's nobody that's going to come save us and get us out of this and this is a uh, this is one of those deals where we're going to have to grind and work our way out of it, and, uh, and still have hope alive. And and uh, you know we're, that's uh, 
that's that's the, the route that we're taking and staying positive and, and hanging in there together and continue to go to work. Well, the cards were already stacked against us on Friday night. Trey Hall, kind of a late scratch with an ankle injury, Coach. It was a late roster move. I know he went out and he warmed up, but he wasn't able to go. How much did that affect the offensive game plan, not having him? Trey's our big play, big play guy. He's been that way for the last two years. Uh, he has been our guy that can take a – uh, a five-yard route and go 80 with it. He's our guy that can take a, a normal five, six-yard run and go 70 with it. And uh, he, he is our our big play guy. And uh, he sprained his ankle uh, second quarter of Brandon game and uh, did not play that half. And we uh, uh, took care of him all last week. And, and uh, he was trying to go and uh, I just didn't feel good about it. And uh, so not having him was definitely uh, – uh, you, and you could see it, it, you know, we just didn't have that big play uh, capability and, and uh, without him, and he's very important to what we do. And uh, so we're anxious to get him back when he's healthy. Well, and the three-game skid that we've had, our Viking defense, they're yielding on average 35 points a game. I know for you that is an extremely rough pill for you to swallow being a defensive-minded coach. But how do you get this Viking defense back playing to the level that we expect them to play here at uh, Warren Central? Uh, it's frustrating. It's not the way that we want to play. It's not the way that we practice. It's not the way that we've come accustomed to, but it is what it is right now. And we have been, uh, in particular, the last three weeks, we have been uh, very bad. Uh, we have been very bad consistently. We've been very bad uh, uh, in, in uh, third down situations. We've been, uh, we've just not been able to make plays. Uh, we haven't had a sack in three weeks. Uh, we've had very limited turnovers uh, the past three weeks. And, uh, you know, when you're not making plays and, and it feels as if you're, uh, you're on your heels and you're taking, uh, you're taking the shots instead of giving the shots, and, uh, you know, we, we, we've got to, to do better and uh, we've got to be better. And, uh, you know, our things that, I'm, that, that we're trying to do as a staff is we're trying to accommodate our personnel. You know, what can we do? What, what, what are we not very good at? Uh, and trying to help them and put them in uh, situations where they can be successful. And uh, we'll continue to try to, to find that, uh, that right formula to help them. But, uh, you know, it's like uh, my father always taught me, is, you know, 90% of defense is spirit and desire. And uh, how you play it and, and how you approach it and how you uh, attack blocks and how you attack the ball carrier and how you play as a unit. Uh, and we need to do a better job of that. And, uh, we, we've been so very close, uh, but it's the, it's the inconsistency on the back end. We've been very inconsistent uh, in our secondary. We've had trouble at the corner position all year long. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're constantly rolling three or four, and whoever uh, has a really good week of practice still trying to find uh, consistency there. And uh, we'll continue to do so and, and continue to try to find the right answers. Well, this is Viking Talk. We're visiting with Coach Josh Morgan. An opportunity to get it right this week when a very talented Pearl team comes to Viking Stadium. What can you tell us about Coach Justin Hunter's uh, team? Well, Pearl, typical Pearl, uh, very physical and tough. Uh, and you can tell that they're, you know, they're just, that's just the way that they have been uh, for really, it seems like forever. Mm -hmm. uh, just tough and physical and reminds me a lot of our program. And uh, just tough, tough-minded kids, tough, tough uh, Tough program, and uh, uh, they have some very big, big playmakers. Uh, quarterback is a, uh, a phenomenal athlete. Last year he was kind of a receiver in a slot position. Now they put him at quarterback. It'll be very similar to what Northwest did, putting their best athlete at quarterback, touching the ball every play. And then they have a uh, very big and physical tailback who will be running behind a physical offensive line. Uh, so it'll be another challenge for our defense and. Uh, be another another big challenge there, to, uh, and on on uh, Pearl's defense, they're uh, uh, like they always have been in a, in a four three base and really physical up front, and, and uh, so it'll be a tough challenge. I think they're one of the hottest teams in Mississippi right now, mm -hmm. uh, and doing really good. And uh, this is um, this is a really big ball game for us for several different reasons, and uh, uh, usually in the past, uh, with the exception of one year where they. They got after us pretty good. Uh, this has always been a really fun game to be a part of, a close game, and usually uh, the winner is, uh, doesn't win by very much. And uh, we're, we're expecting another really big, uh, 
big game, uh, and uh, it'll be physical, and, and uh, hopefully we're in it and got a chance to win it late. Yeah, you talked about that. The two or three years, or maybe more than that, it was a one-score game. We had that one year that it was kind of an outlier that they got to us, but it's always a fun game. And you're right, they are Pearl. Big offensive line. They're led by one of the better centers in the state. 6'2", 290-pound senior Connor Foy. Not the biggest line we've seen from Pearl Coach, but from what I've seen from them, they seem to be athletic and they play their positions really, really well. With the struggles that we've had with our defensive line over the season, how important is it going to be for them to find their legs underneath them and have a big game this week? Well, we need to make stops and get off the field. And whatever that looks like, however we're able to do it. And, uh, you know, we, we're, we will uh, try to help them in, in different ways and as far as moving them and, and, and stunting them and, and bringing pressure. Uh, but again, you know, we, we cannot be on our heels as a defensive line, especially with a 230 pound back coming down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way you stop big power running games is you penetrate uh, and, and we'll, we will uh, uh, we'll try to put our guys in the best position to do that. You talked about that running back. Their backfield is extremely talented, experienced. Number one, Jamari Thompson, 6'2", 230-pound running back. He looks like an offensive lineman coach. And their quarterback, Jay Bird Johnson, very, very talented. It seemed like he's been there for 20 years now, but one of those kids that knows the system extremely well. These guys have play, big playability with the balls in their hands. Discuss the importance. We've had problems with missed tackles the past couple of weeks of not allowing these guys to beat you with their legs. Well, you think uh, the number one thing is is that we've got to trust our teammates and do our jobs. You know, everybody's got assignment football, uh, running to the football, pursuing the football. In case the first man does miss him, we have uh, help there. But again, uh, we're going to have a, a tough time keeping uh, the tailback coming downhill. But at any moment, quarterback has the option in the offense that they're running to pull it. Uh, if he reads something or we lose contain, he'll have the opportunity to, to not only pull it and run it, but to pull it and run it and set up the RPO game on the perimeter or down the field. I mean, it's, it's, uh, the quarterback is, is far from just an athletic quarterback. I mean, he can throw it. Reminds me a lot of KT from last year as far as the throwing ability. Uh, throws a really good ball. Uh, throws a, throws a, got a good arm. Throws well on the run. Uh, so, again, it's not just – the simple fact if he can't throw it, everybody crowd the box type deal. It, it's just that we've got to stop one uh, who's the tailback. And we've got to make him run east and west, side to side. But then we also got to be sound on the edges to make sure that we're containing their quarterback who is truly uh, lightning in a bottle. I mean, he can, he can flat out go. So, uh, again, it's been challenging. Uh, and again, I feel like we've had a good week, got a good plan in place, and, and now it will just be up to us executing it and playing really hard. Yeah, watching the film on them, especially the quarterback, from what I noticed from him, if you don't have team discipline defense on him, he will hit you over the top with uh, receivers. They seem like they have some really good slot receivers that find holes in the zones, and they'll hurt you if you allow them to. There's a lot of holes in the zone because everybody's crowding the box. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's trying to stop one, and when they do that, uh, you have no free safety, and there's holes there, and then now everybody's – They've been gashing everybody over the top because everybody's trying to take away the run game. So we're trying to, you know, we're going to try to be patient as we can, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time aggressive and uh, try to not leave our corners out on the island too much uh, and always have somebody uh, that's responsible for spying or checking on number four because they, what they do is they lower you to sleep. It's five, six yards, seven yards, and all of a sudden you've been seeing it, been seeing it, and he pulls it and he throws it deep or he pulls it and breaks contain. So, uh, we've got to be alert all night. It's going to be a physical game. We've got to be up for the challenge, and, uh, and uh, hopefully our guys are ready and, and uh, can, we can play a little bit better and get off the field. It will be a chess match for sure. Defensively, a four-man front, as we talked about. They're led by number 99, Jeremy Jackson. I'd argue, Coach, one of the more physical defenses we may see this season. Yeah. It's going to be a large task for the offensive line, which should be one of our strengths this week, uh, throughout the season. What are your thoughts on uh, – that matchup this week? Uh, we've seen some really good D linemen over the years, and he may be, you know, the best one, mm -hmm. uh, which is saying, you know, it's a true compliment. Uh, but he is, uh, he's been that way for a long time. I think he's playing the missile game. Uh, I might be wrong on that, but I know he's in one of them. Uh, a, a very physical, big guys up front. You know, you usually have some, some speed guys on the edge, but they're, they're just big defensive tackles out there on the end. So you're looking at a true four man front who's going to be really hard to run against. Uh, they're going to be well coached up. 
uh, very good uh, defensive unit and that plays well together. So, again, that's another area. You know, our, our defense has not been playing very well. Our offense hasn't been very consistent. I mean, we, we have to be consistently good at playing at a high level in all three phases. And uh, we all need to play better, and, and uh, we're all going to have to uh, – play together at a very high level to win this thing and go on a run and uh, we all need to pick it up and, and uh, that's been our that's been our plan and, and uh, hopefully we can be at our best this week. You talk about that with the defensive line being a big front like that. Big fronts like that allows your linebackers usually to run free and Pearl has big linebackers so the the importance of getting to that second level with your offensive lineman this week that's got to be something that Coach Brogdon and Coach Morgan, Coach Rob Morgan has, has really preached to the offensive linemen to help us contain these linebackers. Yeah, you know, we, we, uh, they don't have to bring a lot of pressure and disguise a lot of looks because their D-line has been so dominant. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, when you have that, you're able to apply pressure but also have uh, a, a shell, which is basically uh, seven players, you know, that, that got their eyes on the ball. Mm -hmm. And when you can do that, uh, you can be very successful as a unit when, you're, when your front four is that dominant. So what we've got to be able to do is, is to make plays in our passing game, not allow them to crowd the box, get on that second level. Uh, we're going to have to maintain and get dirty runs. I mean, if they're going to play that type of defense, sometimes a three and a four yard gain, if we can do that consistently, uh, it will make them change some things of what they're doing. So. Uh, uh, we need to sustain some drives on offense. We need to move the chains. Uh, we need to get back in, in how we win games, which is field position and getting off the field defensively and, and taking care of the football. And, and uh, so, again, we, we need to get back on track and, and, and trying to, to, to win the way that we've always win. And, and, uh, but, again, those dirty runs, uh, that's going to be very important for Friday. So that's dirty runs. A four-yard run is a win. Absolutely. That's the old school That's right. mindset. You get four yards, you won first down. That's right. So take what they give us. Absolutely. So the offense, you talked about that. We're averaging 20 points per game. And during region play, and even talking to your, your dad, Coach Morgan, yesterday, it really seems like we are on the cusp of really breaking out. It's just right on the tip there every week. What are you seeing from that side of the ball? Well, it's just uh, it's, to me, if, if, if I had to phrase it up in one word, it would be inconsistent. Uh, I think that we have done some good things. We've seen some phenomenal drives. I think about the, you know, I think we went 98, 99 yards against Brandon, the prettiest drive, uh, one of the prettiest that, you, that, that, that I've ever seen. And, uh, and then we'll go three and out, and then we'll, you know, so again, we, we need to have a level of consistency there. And, and, uh, uh, and, and again, we need some more big runs from our running backs, we need some plays being made from a, it's just, it's about a cohesive unit. Uh, and, and finding a really good rhythm there, but also being able to sustain it for four quarters. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't play a good half or a good quarter or have a good drive, uh, not in the level we play. We have to be consistently good and make some things happen, whether it's just winning field position and, and, and keeping the defense on the sideline for a, a spell and, or even ending with a punt. I mean, it, it, we just need to have uh, some good rhythm, some good drives that we can move the chains, establish some, uh, a rhythm there. And, and uh, as you mentioned, it's, it's just uh, it's hard to put your finger on one thing because it's not. Uh, but I feel like that we have uh, that unit that could be truly special. Uh, and it's looking forward, and hopefully we can put something really good together uh, versus Pearl. you got a running back in T.J. Thompson that is on path to be close to 1,000 yards. I mean, every week just seems like he's getting 100 yards, he's churning it out, he's getting that – ugly runs that you're talking about, those yards, and he's just, he's really, really churning it. Uh, you have to be proud of what you've seen from him. And then last week, you threw in some of these uh, newer kids, some of these youngsters you put up from the ninth grades. Talk about what you saw from them. You know, they took the place of Trey Hall, but are we going to see more of that? Are we going to see Lane Gordon? What do you expect to see this week as far as the running game goes? TJ's been our, our you know, our big workhorse. Uh, he's been durable. Uh, he's been productive. Uh, and done a done a really good job for us. Uh, talking about our, our, our backs, you know, Lane Lane has been steady. Zion is are their steady guys, and, and uh, feel like that they can give us some good good snaps, some good carries. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, you know, Darius Carter is still there. That you know, our steady constant uh, Darius, and, and and with him being there, it's, it's always good to rely on. And and you're right, we brought some young guys up, and and uh, Decorey Knight and. and uh, E.J. Collins and, and, and again they uh, 
Uh, we, they're, they're only going to get more involved and more involved the longer that we have them. We didn't, only had them three or four days of, of last week. And thought the Corey came in and gave us some positive things and got our speed sweep going. Uh, without Trey there in that position, it, uh, that's really what he brings to our offense. And uh, we brought that out in the second half to try to give us uh, – uh, you know, some advantages there in that game. So uh, I think that their roles are going to only maximize and and, uh, uh, and and hopefully we can get Trey going and, and get him back rolling and uh, get him back to where he's healthy, at least uh, where he can play and play at a high level because sometimes 80% uh, uh, Trey Hall is really good. Right. So uh, we're doing our very best to maintain that side and keep that part of our offense going. Well, if we can get a second-half offense – to play in the first half. I think we're going to be all right. Yeah. Because we've been so good in the second half this year. True. Uh, you know, we've put ourselves in a hole. Obviously, we're 0-3 in region play. Now, going forward, every game is going to be a must-win game if we want to uh, continue this trend of playing in the playoffs. Have you prepared this week, and have you prepared the team like this as a playoff game? Yes, yes. And, 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 and you know, <clears throat> as long as there's hope, uh, you know, we're, we're going to uh, – uh, we're going to be all in, and, and uh, we will finish it out, whatever that looks like. And, uh, you know, when people remember their high school years, and that's what I'm interested in is our players, just the journey. It's how you respond. It's mm -hmm. the ups and downs. And, and uh, keeping these groups of guys together uh, and keeping us uh, uh, all headed in the same direction. Uh, and one of the toughest things is there to do as a coach is to when things are going bad and that old, uh, it all feels like it's going downhill and you're grabbing that rope and you're trying to pull it back, it's hard to overcome that. It's just, it doesn't matter what sport it is. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, even in, not even in sports, just in life in general. When things are feel like they're going south and you're trying to hold on, and you're trying to hold that rope and you're trying to, uh, to get it back going, and usually when that momentum gets going, it's harder to pull. So uh, what we've done as collective units had a really good week, respond the only way we know how to respond, uh, you know, and, and uh, continue to work, and we know that we're going to have to pull ourselves out of this, and whether it's this week or the next week or whatever, uh, to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward and we give this game uh, in this moment everything that we got, and when the dust is cleared, we'll reevaluate the situation and go from there. Uh, but they know what's at stake, and, and uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to do everything that we can to uh, turn this thing around and, and, and put our guys in the, uh, the best position to be successful, and, and uh, the rest is going to be up to them. Well, good segue, something you just talked about. How did the team respond this weekend in practice and the corrections that you saw on the film? How did they respond to the teaching? I think I think well. I think we've got a bunch of, of guys that know how to win. You don't just stop knowing and, and understanding. You don't stop. And it just just doesn't go away. We've mm -hmm. had a we've had a rough patch, uh, but also we need to understand it is hard. These games are hard to win, and if we keep doing the same thing, we're going to keep getting the same results. So we've got to be better in aspects like preparing, like staying focused and alert, uh, and approaching these games with a. Uh, a level of, of, of fight in us and a level of attention to detail and the small things. So, you know, we're learning a lot, and hopefully we we're able to learn from that and not make the same mistakes and get better at, in some areas. But uh, response has been good. Uh, and, and, again, uh, uh, winning, winning sure does cure a lot of things, and that's what we're going to be going after. Yep. Well, what's going to be the keys to beating Pearl this week? Well, I think, obviously, that we cannot allow them to make big plays. Uh, and that's in the run or the passing game. And, and, and again, uh, that's going to be very hard to do. I uh, feel like they have maybe the best one-two uh, tandem at the running back position and counting the quarterback with that. And uh, so we're going to have to be able to minimize that blow. Having said that, anytime you have a, uh, a run game, a ball control type of offense that's going to go tempo, all right, we know that and we've seen that at versus Brandon, which is another challenge. Uh, but we've got to be able to get off the field during third downs. If not, they lay on you, lay on you, lay on you, and they grind you down, they wear you down. Your offense is on the sidelines. So the biggest thing is getting our tails off the field, and uh, we've got to be good on third and fourth downs, and that's an area that we've struggled at. So we're going to have to be better in that area, uh, and we're going to have to uh, be consistently good, uh, uh, consistent, consistently good on our offense, and, 
and making sure that we're, we're, we're battling that and that we're controlling the clock and we're controlling the game with our offense and that we've got to get off the field defensively. So be a challenge, be tough, uh, but that's what it'll look like and that's what I think will be the keys. Well, regardless, let's have a good time this Friday night. Let's do it. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you coming here. I know it's always easier to do these when we're winning, even that's though right. we're going through this tough time. We appreciate everything you do for us. And we thank you for all that you do. We thank you for your support. Yeah, we're going through a tough stretch, but this build adversity. It's good for the kids. It's good for everyone. We thank you for your support. Next Friday night, we will be back on the road going to Terry, taking on the Terry Bulldogs. Hope you will join us. We will be streaming live stream. We'll be on the radio V105.5. Hope that you join us. But again, thank you for your support. That's going to do it for this week's edition of For the Show. For Josh Morgan, I'm Brandon Davis. We'll see you next week. Until then, rise up, Vikings.